In my previous video about Goon Hilly, we learned quite a bit about the capabilities of one antenna. One, and yet this single antenna is going to serve so many purposes for the future of spaceflight. Not only for Artemis, but as we learned later on, for SpaceX as well, and Starlink. And what I find to be really amazing is just how inexpensively these guys managed to renovate this complex for, and just how efficient and successful they were overall. We're talking less than $10 million to renovate the primary interplanetary antenna, and that's just for starters. On top of that, they also have an antenna that has equipment kept cooled to only 7 degrees Kelvin, 7 degrees above absolute zero, which is pretty close to what James Webb accomplishes. How did they do all of this? Well, we're going to find all of that out in just a moment. So when we started wandering about the complex, and by the way, if you haven't seen the details from the previous video, please stop this one and go back and check it out. It's linked right here and also in the description. But in any event, we started to see a lot of antennas that were dedicated to individual geostationary satellites. So for every one of these antennas, they have a high paying customer in geostationary orbit communicating with with the Earth, and these customers are from all over the planet, and all of them really like to maintain their anonymity. However, it's also important to remember that they provide interplanetary communications to things like Mars Express, and also to the Japanese Ayabusa probe, and this was the antenna we were headed for. Okay, what we have in front of us is our S-band, high power and amplifiers, we have two. So we'll nominally use one on an uplink, but we'll have the second as a pop backup ready to go in case of an anomaly, we can switch between them. What we have is the waveguide behind, which can uh, will go up to the antenna with a waveguide switch. Alternatively, if we're doing in-station tests, we can switch it so the signal will go into load. So that's just amplifying it into those large heat sinks. So it's just radiating into the room and not actually radiating out into space, uh, which uh, we wouldn't really want to, if, especially if the spacecraft was going directly overhead. Fantastic. Typical Cornish weather, which is absolutely hammering down on us right now. Jamie, thank you so much for this opportunity to have a look at this thing in motion, in operation. Um, 
Wow. Well, that is, that is kind of the way things are here in Britain. We also have customer equipment. So when a commercial customer wants to come in and bring in their own equipment, we can host their racks of equipment and they interface that into our uh, front-end system. We have to be patched into our high band amplifiers so they can demodulate and decode their own signals but use the antenna for tracking and our HPAs for transmitting to their spacecraft. Roughly how many commercial customers do you have in here? At the moment it's just one, but we have the space, as you can see it's quite a large room. We can have many more customers uh, host them. So th all of this just accommodates Mars Express, is that correct? Or? The rack you see in front of us is just for commercial customers. Commercial. We have the eight racks on the side here, which is for our uh, ESA requirement. Uh, for, and we use that for Mars Express, Interpol and Gaia as one of our other missions and our Artemis support as well. This is our X-Fan amplifier, so we use this for Mars Express and we'll also be using it for the Artemis Cupid's CubeSat missions. So again, we have a primary and a backup in case we need to uh, fail over to the redundant PPA. And these are rated for about two and a half kilowatts of power. So Mars Express and the Artemis CubeSats coming through here? Through these amplifiers, yeah. So the telecommands going out to both spacecraft, we'll be using these amplifiers. seen in front of us is some of the buildings we have in Goodhilly which we aspire to have for manufacturing. So in our future ambition we might manufacture antennas here, cryogenic receivers. Uh, as you can see most of them have got solar on the roof so we've got 350 kilowatts of solar and we also host customer antennas as well as owning our own antennas on site. As you can see, it was raining like crazy here not that long ago, fortunately. And then, uh, Jamie was kind enough to move the antenna for me, and unfortunately, I wasn't able to, wasn't able to film much of that. But that's the same antenna that you saw pointed directly at the sky prior to that, and uh, it was neat to see it move. Unfortunately, the rain was just hammering my lens, so couldn't really get a lot of that, but uh, yeah neat stuff and I didn't expect that they would just move one of their antennas for me today. So then we walk past the so-called antenna farm, each one of these being dedicated to yet another geostationary satellite, another customer, some of them sending transmissions, some of them just receiving transmissions, some of them of course going both ways, but it gives you an impression of just how many customers these guys have, and it is expanding all the time, and as I mentioned before, as a result of my own investigations, I discovered that Starlink has a facility here as well, and they rely on Goon Hilly just as much as the many other customers who use this place do. So it is an amazingly extensive operation. Again, being created on such an affordable budget and with a relatively small staff that's growing all the time as their ambitions and the needs for this station continue to expand as well.
the antenna. This has a story to it as well. So this is Google 99. This was used by the people on the space station. So that was an initiative at the time to get local school children or the school children around the country to engage with Tim. They had uh, radios at their schools so they could communicate with Tim. But those signals were coming to Goon Hilly, being transmitted to the space station. On we go, which antenna is this one again? You say this is the Aerial One. Aerial One, the beginning of telecom. Exactly, this was built in 1962 by the post office. And then this was used for the world's first transatlantic communication via satellite with the Telstar One satellite. So the satellite which was built by Bell Labs, Bell was a station in America in Maine. That was a very large uh, horn antenna in a large radio. That was transmitted to Telstar, being received by both us in Goon Hilly and there's another station in France which had a, uh, a horn antenna in a radio, same as America. But those are very sensitive pieces of equipment and then it turned out that a parabolic reflector would prevail and that would be the industry standard rather than using large horns. Here I was thinking that I was just going to do an interview with Ian and that you guys would send me some footage and that would be the end of it and I can't I literally cannot believe I'm standing here right now and looking at all this stuff up close and personal it really I mean it's just mind-blowing how huge this thing is and Apollo 11 our first experience or your first experience with it over this my god Radio masts up to London, and then over to transmission. Mind blowing. Before I was born, this facility was pioneering the world of communications, not only here on this planet, but also deep into space, all the way from Apollo 8, as you heard Jamie said, through Apollo 11 and beyond. But then it fell into disuse and now is being reborn to pioneer the future of communications, both to the moon and interplanetary in the future. It's amazing that they're able to accomplish this on a private scale, not with government funding of any kind, and to do it on such a reasonable budget, NASA could learn a great deal from the folks at Goon Hilly. I'd like to express my deepest appreciations to Ian and to Jamie and to the rest of the Goon Hilly staff for being so generous with their time when I came out to visit. I wish them the best of luck. Smash that like, hit that subscribe, hit that notification button, very important to my channel and check the description for various ways for me to keep bringing you content like this and as always stay angry about space